This weekend marks the beginning of another footballing season in Derbyshire, as Derby County adjust to life in League One, and Chesterfield prepare to battle it out in the National League next weekend. For many in our county, it's a part of life, where frustration and elation can be just moments apart. Football presents a unique policing challenge too, both inside and outside the grounds, as we try to make sure everyone who comes to Derbyshire to enjoy football can do so safely. And here's how we do it. You know, all, all old cops talk about the good old days. You know, we just have used to give them a look and then they'd do as they were told or they'd get a clip round the ear. You know, quite rightfully, policing's moved on. We pri used to pride ourselves, and still do, on the engagement that we have with fans when they come to Derbyshire football matches, you know. It's all about, first it's about engagement, um, and then if we have to uh, use force, then we'll do that. But our starting point should, must and should always be, hey, welcome to Derbyshire, um, you're a football fan, this is our county, we'll help showcase everything that's good about our county. Um, but if you misbehave or you break the law, then we're going to be um, the other side of policing, where we will take action and we'll, we'll maintain the Queen's peace. Historically, football policing has always been a difficult subject, one that conjures up images of clashes between officers and supporters, or rival sets of fans. Thankfully, the landscape has changed massively in the last two decades. Why do we police football? You know, why is there a Derbyshire Police Football Unit, but there's not a Derbyshire Police Rugby Unit, or Horse Racing Unit, or Sports Unit? And I suppose you have to go back to, to the 80s and we do a, do a PowerPoint with 80 slides with mullets and Top of the Pops and Cristiano Ronaldo was born. It's all about the 1985 High Silk disaster um, the Juventus, the Liverpool Juventus. And you had Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister at the time, calling it an English disease. Obviously, we're still the only country to have football banning orders, which was brought in 1989. It's all a result of what happened in the 70s and 80s. Now, obviously, we're in the year 2022 now. We're a million miles away from that. Years ago, it used to be, one, you're a spotter, you're there to spot hooligans, risk. Two, banning orders, it's all about the bans. Did you get a ban at court? No, oh no, that's no good, is it? But since we've gone to the engagement side of things, um, apart from this season, and um, it, it seems to be paying dividends, really, so. We've pretty much got away, certainly from a police point of view, from escorting fans. We don't, we don't tend to escort fans unless their behaviour dictates that. I remember the first time we didn't escort Derby Forest game and the Forest fans was waiting in a pub, waiting for police to escort them and when we said they weren't, they were like, what do you mean you're not escorting us? You know, they were genuinely shocked and it was a real brave move by our, our gaffers, to be honest, at the time, but it's worked massively because, you know, why shouldn't people come and engage in, and go in the same pubs at football? Cause and my road of policing for that small percentage, really. By shifting the focus onto engagement, officers on the ground often mix in with the fans. It's chatting to people on the way to the match, posing for photos, walking through the concourse and mixing with supporters that can sometimes make all the difference. When there's an issue such as a fight, disorder at a match, they will come to you to speak to you um, because you work most matches. You are that go-to for that person. Um, they trust you, they, they know you are a Derby spotter. Um, like when we go to away matches, they will approach you and say, are you Derby? And you'll say, yeah, yeah. And then they'll go, all oh, right, okay. And then they just the conversation just flows with the fans and they feel more at ease with you and they can talk to you a bit more. The way I look at it, I'm a safer neighbourhood for that football club, much like we have safer neighbourhood teams for for Chesterfield and for, for Derby City Centre and for Mackworth and Bredsall and all these little villages. How I see our role, it is that safer neighbourhood team, that point of contact for Chesterfield and for Derby. And what I don't think is many SNT officers that would get a chance to engage with seven, eight thousand people on, on one event and 30,000 at Derby. And you are that point of contact. It's all about engagement. Don't put this on, I'm going to pull, right? <laughs> But the engagement between police and fans doesn't just happen on a match day. It's a year-round project that also sees the policing unit heading into schools to talk to the younger generation about their behaviour and help steer them down the right path. I think we did sort of 800, 1,000, 1,000 pupils in the year before COVID, um, going out there and doing some preventative work on don't get involved in this um, because this will happen to you. Home visits, 
Um, we've got a, a, a procedure in force that's been adopted by countless other forces, where if, let's say, a, a juvenile comes to our attention who doesn't get arrested but is um, does enough to come to our attention, shall we say, we will send a letter to their parents to say, young Johnny has been involved in this. If they then get another uh, uh, come to our attention in the next two years, they will get a home visit for myself or Adam to sit down with, with mum and dad or guardian or relatives say, this is what happened. And if they get three in two years, if they're a juvenile, they're straight onto a bespoke and social behavioural contract, acceptable behavioural contract. I do a lot in schools and with the community trust at Chesterfield as well to, uh, to educate people. So it's not, even though I've got a football tinge in it because that's my day role, it's very much an educational point, much like any other safe and able team would do as well. And whether it's in a classroom, outside the ground, on the concourse or even pitch side, that engagement between the police and fans has one core purpose, to keep everyone safe. And our, our main mission statement is working together to make football safer. And with us, Blue Light Services, Safety Advisory Group, stakeholders, everybody, then that's what we try and do. But our, our, our starting point will always be engagement. You know, you come to Derbyshire, we're going to do everything that we can to maintain the Queen's Peace, to make sure that we not only maintain, but we enhance your match day experience. You know, and that's what we do.